The Oasis of October. As an educator, October was always my favorite month, and it still is. Procedures are well in place. The beginning of school events are behind you. Students have become accustomed to changing classes, dealing with lockers, and enjoying the variety of activities that go along with the fall of the school year. The plans you spent all summer making are paying off. Looking ahead, the holiday traditions of November and December will make for busy weeks, but nestled between the beginning of the school year and the end of the calendar year is that oasis of October. As a school leader, my experience was if I wanted to launch something new, retool something old, or do some course correction, October was my best shot at making it happen. That's not true just for education. We all experience busy times of the year. October isn't it. Every day brings plenty to do. Little tasks are everywhere. But your job and mine is not to try to bail the water out as fast as the holes in the bottom of the boat are allowing it in. Our job is to perform the task today that will make tomorrow better. Don't get distracted by the might-be-nice-to-do items on your desk. That's what was meant in a quote attributed to Abraham Lincoln. Give me six hours to chop down a tree, and I'll spend the first four sharpening the axe. Now, whether Lincoln actually spoke those words is subject to some debate, but we can hear the truth in them. Leaders focus on outcomes and look for the shortest distance between here and there. Most importantly, leaders are found in different roles. For many, school leader is a synonym for the principal or the superintendent. But how about the assistant principals and instructional coaches? What about the department head who's balancing the role of teaching along with that of shaping the directions of a curricular area? How about the classroom teacher who sponsors clubs and other activities that benefit the entire school? Are these people not also school leaders? And if you're not in the educational arena, who are the leaders in your organization? The title will extend far beyond the CEO. Another president, John Quincy Adams, is credited with saying, If your actions inspire others to dream more, learn more, do more, and become more, you are a leader. Given this definition, you probably see yourself in these words. The question becomes how to maximize your efforts. Invest in yourself. Fly on any airline and you'll hear the same instructions. In the unlikely event of the loss of cabin pressure, oxygen masks will drop from the ceiling. Securely place your mask on first before helping anyone next to you who may need assistance. The message is clear. You can't help anyone else until you first take care of yourself. Every good thing you do for yourself or others happens through the dimension of time. Get control of how you spend your time and you begin to fit the definition of leadership crafted by our founding father. My purpose in telling you this is threefold. Number one, it serves to remind you that there are nuts and bolts articles all over my website, not to mention my book, that will show you how to craft the day so that you can make the most of it. Second, it aims to inspire readers at an important point in the year. And finally, for those who've read this far and are hungry for a game plan, I have something for you. If you've been with me for long at all, you know how much I like the tickler file. It's the thing that gets papers off your desk, off your mind, and causes them to magically appear at just the right time. During October, let's get the tickler file hitting on all cylinders. How might you use the tickler file? The possibilities differ by person and position, but here's some ideas, including several from a starter list I share in Chapter 1 of my book, Get Organized. Birthday cards need to be purchased for friends, relatives, and perhaps colleagues. Buy all of them with one trip to the card shop. Address all the envelopes and attach the return address labels to the whole batch in one sitting. In the spot where the postage stamp will later go, pencil the date each card needs to go in the mail. Drop the cards into the appropriate tickler files. Throughout the year, cards will appear on the exact days they need to be sent. You'll never forget a birthday again. Here's another. 
you're completing a report for a committee of which you are a member, and you see that you don't have all the information you need. Rather than allowing that report to just sit on your desk, add to your task list what information you need to obtain and make a plan for how you'll get it. And then slip this report into a tickler file for several days in the future. When the report resurfaces, complete it with this newly gained information. Here's another. You're promoting the school play. And as part of your publicity, you compose a series of messages for the school's morning announcements, each one growing in enthusiasm as the date approaches. Why not batch the task? Write all of the announcements in one sitting and then file each one in the tickler file for the appropriate day. Here's another. Proposals are being submitted and you wish to review them all in one batch. Pick a day for this task, and as those proposals roll in, throw them in the folder for that day. On the day that you wanted to review the proposals, they're all there together. And here's one more. You resolve to get better about expressing gratitude to others. Yet every time you think about writing a note, there are no note cards around. Why not get yourself some note cards, maybe 52 blank note cards and matching envelopes, scatter them out through your tickler file so that about once a week, a blank note card resurfaces. And that's your trigger to stop right then and take a moment to write a thank you note to someone. Others begin to think of you as more thoughtful. Actually, you've always been thoughtful. You've just been forgetful. On those hectic days, the best of intentions often fall prey to the worst interruptions. That's why we need simple systems like the Tickler file. If you'd like to read more about setting it up and using this system, it's explained in Chapter 1 of my book. If you're not already on my email list, sign up today. And as a free gift, you'll get that first chapter for free. And if you've been on my list for a while but you don't ever remember that little gem, well, let me know and I'll send you a copy. How will you make your October an oasis? What will you have accomplished by the end of the month? Let me know in the comments. Would you like to work with me? On my site, you'll see my most popular topics for breakouts and keynote presentations. I'm currently also accepting coaching clients. You'll be able to read more on the coaching page of my website. This has been Frank Buck. Thanks for listening. Now go and have the time of your life.